This ministry is made possible by the faithful support of viewers like you. And so... This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday, one of the most exciting Sundays of the year. I think Easter would be number one, Christmas is number two, Pentecost may be right up in there with them because this is when the Holy Spirit of God empowers his people. Yep, and the uh, message of Jesus was forevermore uh, sent out to four corners of the world and from there it exploded and there was no going back. The word of Jesus and his reality and love for us spread like wildfire, and it's been spreading ever since. And Pentecost has been, you know, most people know Pentecost is pen, with, associated with Pentecostalism. And the reason Pentecostalism got its name is because the, the apostles had the ability to suddenly speak a foreign language. Not an unintelligible language, a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And I find that more amazing actually and more miraculous than uh, than what someone will call a prayer language or an unintelligible language they were able to speak the language of the people who were there in jerusalem at that time and share the good news of jesus christ so robert when one of the things you pointed out was that something else that's so important for people to remember is that yes that was a miraculous day obviously a huge day the pentecost and the ability to decipher foreign foreign tongues or to hear the message in your own native language. But you were explaining to me that, you know, or reminding me that the disciples had been in the upper room and they were scared to death. They I mean, were. Jesus they were. had been crucified and they were scared to go out because they knew they were next. And ultimately they did become next. So their fear was justified, but what happened was when the Holy Spirit of God touched their lives, they overcame the fear and did what God called them to do, which changed the world. And I think this morning, what we're asking you to do on Pentecost Sunday is to consider some, doing something, and that is conquering the fear that you have had. If you That's have right. sometime in your life felt a calling to follow the Holy Spirit in one way, shape, or form, I want to do what I can to reignite that dream. Mm -hmm. I want to do something to, to help you realize that you can overcome your fear. And on this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday 2019, you can say, I committed my life to Jesus. And you know, everybody has fear. I mean, I'm thinking, yeah. you know, I went through, the, the last few days were really fear, fearful for me because I know that right before any of us have a personal breakthrough, whether it's in your, your profession, your family and life, no matter what it is, uh, you know, there's like a wrestling of the soul. And that's why it is so important to have time alone with God to um, ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and to help you with your decisions because we all have to make tough decisions every day. And I just don't know how people do it without God, without the Holy Spirit guiding and leading. And he will give you the courage. You will get the strength and the power and the, the freedom once you make decisions that are so difficult and so fearful. So, Because courage is not the absence of fearful emotions. Courage is putting into practice uh, what you know you've been called to do. This past week, we, wa we witnessed the celebration of the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Right. And I guarantee you every single man that stepped off of those PT boats was absolutely scared to death. But they got off anyway. They climbed, they scaled the cliffs. And as a result of that, democracy is alive in the world today. 
-hmm. And God is calling you right now to join this army, his army, uh, Onward Christian Soldiers <laughs> is the song I used to sing as a kid. And, I heard that too. And, <laughs> We're older. <laughs> exactly. And, and this army is an army that is out to conquer hatred, to conquer fear, and, and to, to bring love and joy and goodness to all. It is. So I look forward to hearing your message and to reading scripture in just a little while. Okay, we will be right back and God loves you and so do we. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference. Today I'm reading about Pentecost as recorded in the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a loud sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? And I'll be right back with today's prayer. Now let's come together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Pentecost. Thank you for giving uh, the apostles of you, Lord of Jesus, um, the courage and the um, conviction that their beliefs were stronger than any fear they may have been holding on to. Thank you that they went out and that from there the message of Jesus could not be stopped, that it went worldwide to all four corners of the earth and continues to this day. We thank you and we acknowledge that you are a great God. Help each and every one of us who might be going through a really fearful time right now. Give us courage. Give us the belief that through you, we can conquer everything. And in your timing, we will see your perfect work be revealed in our lives. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of this dynamic faith community. Go online to drshuler.org today and download our community app. There you can request prayer and pray for others. Receive positive, encouraging content from Dr. Schuler and more. This past week we witnessed and we experienced the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And what an amazing event that was. It was the largest amphibious air assault ever in history. It will never be repeated because of the changing warfare that we have today. It will never be repeated. And by the grace of God, we were able as a nation and as a, as a democracy to maintain democracy. And when Franklin D. Roosevelt announced this to the people that this was taking place. What he, what he did
did was basically share a prayer on national radio. And I took a couple excerpts from this prayer because, as you know, we've been going through the, the, the monuments in Washington, D.C. that deal with the presence and the reality of God, that deal with Bible verses, and, and I'm continuing that series. And, and so I'm going to continue it through the 4th of July, but I want to share with you the prayer uh, that Franklin D. Roosevelt shared with our nation when he announced that D-Day was taking place. Almighty God, he prayed. Our sons, pride of our nation this day, have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness to their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our first forces, but success may not come with rushing speed. But we shall return again and again, and we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tired by night and by day without rest until the victory is won. And, O oh Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in each other, faith in our united crusade. With thy blessings, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogance. Lead us to the saving of our country and with our sister nations into a world unity that will spell a sure peace, a peace invulnerable to the schemings of unworthy men and a peace that will let all of men live in freedom, reaping their just rewards of their honest toil. Thy will be done, Almighty God. Amen. Soon those words will appear on the monument for the uh, World War II monument in Washington, D.C. And that's only half the prayer. I edited it out because it's too long to read here. But, but what I want you to, the reason I wanted to, to mention that, and the reason why I'm bringing up D-Day from this past week is, be, is because it took an army, a huge army, the, the largest assault ever uh, to be victorious. And I am convinced today that God is calling up an army of people, an army of leaders. He is calling up people who have enough faith in his divine guidance to respond to the call that he is giving right now. And so I'm asking you to, today to join me in prayer. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's not an accident that I'm revealing this today, that we're moving into this next phase of our ministry today. Because Pentecost Sunday was the Sunday, the day that, uh, that the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit that Jesus promised would come, actually came and descended upon the apostles and through through fire uh, gave them a special gift to be able to speak in foreign languages. You heard Donna read the scripture today, a beautiful scripture, a scripture which, which reveals to us how the Holy Spirit works. And the most miraculous thing that I believe the Holy Spirit does for us as individuals, as people today, tomorrow, is this. It gives us courage. I want you to hear that. It gives us courage. Yeah, trust me, I'd love to be able to have the gift to be able to speak in a foreign language without having to study it. I study my Spanish almost every day because I'm very, it's very difficult for me to, to grasp foreign language. <laughs> I know in some, before I went to seminary, I spent four years in Greek because I knew that that was the only way I was going to get through Greek and Hebrew in seminary. So I, I was able to do that. I, I knew Greek very well. In fact, I, since then, I've translated the entire, most of the New Testament, but for sure all of Acts and all of John and Romans and, and Galatians and Philippians and, 
and I could keep going on. Mark, I, I've translated Mark and and Matthew, and so so I have I, I know the Bible intimately, specifically the New Testament. And here's what I've come to believe about Pentecost Sunday: the apostles did exactly what Jesus told them to. Upon his resurrection, he met with the women and gave them instructions and met with the apostles in the upper room and told them to go to Galilee and there he will meet them. They went to Galilee. From there they came back to Jerusalem and they were hiding in the upper room, afraid for their life. They knew that what, that the, the same people who had killed Jesus would kill them. And ultimately they did. All of the apostles, with the exception of one, uh, face a martyr's death. And today, around the world, there are Christians who are who are martyred. Uh, we just I just read in the, this this past month that the largest church in China, fifty thousand members, was destroyed by the Chinese government. They bulldozed down the church. Persecution, Christian persecution, is alive and real. I haven't personally experienced it, but it's because I live in the United States of America, and it's because of D-Day and, and other events like this, the revolution, etc., etc., that we have the freedom to be able to worship God without the fear of persecution. And I am convinced that with the Holy Spirit of God, that will remain. But here's what happens outside the United States. People face persecution and fear is real, but the Holy Spirit conquers fear. So the Holy Spirit ascended on the apostles. Suddenly they had to be able, they had the gift to be able to speak in tongues. And it happened to be during the harvest festival. That's what Pentecost means, it's the harvest festival. And here is this harvest festival and, and, and the apostles being able to speak, the, the, the language in the own tongue of those who were there went out and shared the good news and it says that day 3,000 were added to that number. 3,000! And, and a couple days later we see that another 2,000 were added to their number and they were baptized and the church of Jesus Christ continued to grow. Well all those people who are in Jerusalem celebrating the Harvest Festival or, or Pentecost were there as tourists. And when you go someplace as a tourist, when you're done with your vacation, you're done with your holiday, you go home and you let everybody know what happened. So here, while the gospel of Jesus Christ was centered in 12 apostles and a few other disciples, it was easy to, to extinguish. But now on Pentecost Sunday, 3,000 people believe and they're all taking the message of Jesus Christ back to their communities. Another 2,000 a couple days later believe and they're taking the message back to, to their communities. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is spread around the world, never to be extinguished again. And the truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ will never be extinguished. But today I am asking you to join me in prayer. I'm asking you to join me in prayer that we come together and we pray for leaders because it requires people who have been touched by the Holy Spirit of God, who have been called by God to be elders, deacons, pastors, to be missionaries, to, to, to open their homes and, and to take a chance on the good news of Jesus Christ and to share it in, in a beautiful way. In 2006, I had a vision and a dream to build a church with no walls. I have been working on this dream ever since. I've had, I've had one problem after another, and I believe it's spiritual warfare, and today I'm experiencing spiritual warfare. One of the things I have is I have a loudspeaker on the other side of the lake playing bingo of all things. Maybe you've heard some of it in the background, but the fact is that the Holy Spirit of God can overcome all those distractions. The Holy Spirit of God can overcome all of the spiritual warfare. The Holy Spirit of God can give you the confidence to be the person God has called you to be. And so today I'm asking you to pray. To pray for the next week, a solid week, every day. Put it in your, in your journals, 
uh, write it down and on a, on a post-it note and stick it on the mirror of your above your your bathroom sink. Put it on your nightstand so you see it before you go to bed. And it is this: Oh Lord, are you calling me to be a leader in your church, the Church of Jesus Christ? It is a church without walls. It is a church built upon the power of the Holy Spirit to transform human lives. So pray. Pray about it today, tomorrow, and all week long. Later in the week, I'm going to give you some more instructions as to what we may be doing. If you, if you know that you're called right now, I'm actually taking appointments to meet with people. And you can go to our Facebook page and you can make an appointment and we will chat and we will figure out some next steps because I'm not sure what the next steps are. I just know that it's time for us to call together an army because it requires an army to overcome the enemy. And the enemy is humanism. The enemy is 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 our, our our negative innate human thoughts that continue to tear us down. The enemy are those who would bring us and keep us away from the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his grace. So do it today. Pray with me and continue to pray. And if you're ready, make an appointment. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment right now where we can come together and we can experience the, the reality of your goodness in our lives. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, as your Holy Spirit went th throughout the conquered conquered the, the fear of the apostles and went throughout the world and 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 establish your church worldwide. So oh Lord help us to join your church as a leader and as a missionary and as an elder or a deacon or, or a small group leader. Whatever it is, you know what it is. And so, oh God, we thank you for this time and we praise your name always and forever. Amen. Now please join me in a moment for the benediction. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. In your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen.